For some of you watching this video, the mod I'm about to talk about covering in this video will change what you're doing tonight and probably for the next few days. This is a massive and monumental mod release for both Fallout 4 and Skyrim, and it's actually a game changer for a lot of people. So the mod or really tool I'm talking about in this video is Wabajack. Yes, cleverly named off of the item from the Elder Scrolls. And in effect, put simply, what this is going to do is add mod packs into Fallout 4 and Skyrim, and also, which I'll talk more about, technically support for Fallout 3, New Vegas, and even some of the older Elder Scrolls games. We've talked about mod packs in the past on this channel, some of the controversy around them, looking at some of the previous tools. Just speaking broadly, it is a kind of touchy subject in the Bethesda modding scene. People tend to have pretty strong feelings on it. For the purposes of this video, I'm first just going to show off the tool for those interested, but towards the end, I'll talk about the pros and cons or controversy that it could stir. But what we're talking about today is actually quite different from previous mod pack tools in that this one is just better. And to really just convey why, I'd say it's probably best to just show what this tool actually does, what it feels like to use it. So in order to get started, you're going to really need one main thing, that being a fresh install of whatever game you are modding. So in this example, let's take Skyrim, Skyrim Legendary Edition specifically, a fresh install of that off of Steam. From there, you're going to need the Wabajack exe file. You could find that linked on their Discord, which I will put a link to down below in the description. You'll launch the Wabajack tool, you'll have to select some of the corresponding folders and install locations. From there it'll do its thing, download all of the mods, and some of the other miscellaneous stuff it has to do. At the end, with this tool, you actually do have the option to endorse all of the mods that were added. You then do have to copy the contents of this folder into your original Skyrim install location, and then actually nothing. That's it. From here, launch up Mod Organizer 2, which this will have installed for you. Click Run on Skyrim Special Edition Script Extender, which is automatically configured, and now I am playing Skyrim with 284 mods. It was literally that simple. The Wabajack tool actually downloaded, installed, and patched every single mod here. So now, pretty much outside of just configuring some of the options you want to in-game, you're free to play. This installed even some of those other things, like an ENB or Skyrim Script Extender, so you don't even have to do that stuff. Obviously, it's not the load order you customized or picked, but I'm playing 284 mods in Skyrim with maybe 10 minutes or so of configuration or user input compared to the several hours this would typically take if I was to do it myself. Although some past tools would automate the middle parts of actually downloading and installing some of the mods, this one really goes to the next level. It's super user friendly. Outside of copying and pasting those files, it does literally everything. So that when it's done, you just have to launch into game and again, you have to go through the mod configuration process. But even for a lot of these mod packs already, certain save files are available online that has most of that step done for you. That was one example of this tool in action using Skyrim Legendary Edition and the Ultimate Skyrim mod pack. And to be clear on this, somebody actually has to take a list of mods, or what they're doing right now is oftentimes adapting an existing mod pack to work with Wabajack. Oftentimes, this is actually someone totally separate from the original mod pack creator. That's important because if you're going to use this tool after watching this video and you're having issues getting things to work, properly, don't contact the mod pack creators or even the mod authors. The person you're going to want to contact is whoever is posting these links on the Wabajack Discord. If you contact the wrong person, you're probably just going to annoy them and it's things like that that could lead to some of these things getting taken down, so please don't do that. As of right now, there are four separate mod packs that are available for this. You do have Ultimate Skyrim, which I did just show you. Also for Skyrim, we do have Yasht, as well as Alexi's Legacy of the Dragonborn. But then finally, for the Fallout 4 side of things, we do have Fallout 4 Enhanced Edition, which is almost like a hardcore overhaul for Fallout 4. As of right now, again, we only have these four options. Part of the reason I wanted to make this video is to give this more exposure. Hopefully, we'll have several more mod packs from some of you guys watching. Maybe you'll go give this a try and try and configure your own. There's some slight differences in how you actually go through the installation process for some of these various mod packs. I would say Ultimate Skyrim is definitely the easiest, but all of them are pretty similar. Some just having one or two additional steps that honestly don't take long at all. But from the user side or user perspective, this is honestly amazing. If you don't want to deal with building or tweaking your own load order and would rather just have a heavily modded experience in Skyrim or Fallout 4, this tool will give that to you right now. As you can see in the background, I'm playing both Skyrim and Fallout 4. Getting each of these working really only took 20 to 30 minutes on my part, which is kind of insane for how modded these two games are. That being said, this tool definitely won't be for everyone. I would say in particular, it'll appeal to casual fans that maybe don't mod super often or again, don't want to go through the steps of creating a long load order. In order for this to work appropriately, you can't have an existing installation of Mod Organizer 2 that 
that isn't in portable mode. So for me, for example, I installed Mod Organizer 2 a while ago. It wasn't in portable mode. So as I tried to install a list, it would actually error out. I then had to find all the old versions of Mod Organizer on my computer and delete them first. You also, of course, as I mentioned, need a clean install of the game. This is actually one of the easier parts to achieve. You just rename the file folder. So for me, I have Fallout 4 old and then Fallout 4, just the normal new one that has the mod pack installed on it. Whenever I want to play my old Fallout 4 build, I would just switch the file names. And it's really easy to install two versions of a game using this via Steam. After the installation and patching is complete, you're really just using Mod Organizer 2 to actually launch the game. So from there, you can disable or enable additional mods, adding some of your own stuff onto the mod list. But during the installation process, it's not like you could not install or not download some of the things required. You have to have all of the mods downloaded or the tool won't continue to the extraction and patching process. But one of the other major barriers to entry with this is, in order to actually use it, you need Nexus Premium. All of the mods are being downloaded off of nexusmods.com. In order to automate a download like this, you have to be a premium member on Nexus. This is in no way connected to the people actually creating the mod packs. It's a requirement by Nexus for them to use a certain API and then to give your account access to that. And frankly, at three euros a month, technically you only have to buy this for one month if you wanted. It's not a bad deal. I would certainly pay three bucks to get this kind of experience in Fallout 4 or Skyrim. It's also partly my hope that by making this video, it'll give this a little bit more attention. Hopefully some more mod packs do pop up, some different variants on the game for different people to experience. The ones right now are a little bit more of the hardcore-esque crowd, especially for Fallout 4. It's making the game more like an RPG and also a bit more difficult. If you're looking for an easier experience, you can configure some of the mods to allow that, but hopefully this tool gets a bit more traction and as a result, some more options. Now, of course, with any mod tool like this, it's going to come with some critics or some controversy. I would say in its current form, Wabajack is really a tool most ideal on the user side. It has almost everything you could hope for or even ask for. On the mod author side, though, of course, there is a little bit left to be desired. With mod packs and Bethesda modding, there's almost always been some controversy. This oftentimes is frustrating for users. You just want to play the game with mods, and then people look at mod authors that are causing some of the stir as just kind of bad or not really liking them as a result. But I really feel like this is one of those things with two sides to the story. Many of the mod authors are just creating these mods in their free time for free with no actual compensation. You seeing their mod page is really all they're getting, the community interaction or even recognition. Of course, right now with Wabajack, most of that is totally removed. But also, of course, one of the other big issues around this is there's simply no way to opt out of it. Let's say you uploaded a mod to Nexus right now and then somebody comes along and is like, hey, that'd be great in my mod pack. Unless you delete your mod from Nexus, there's no way to actually stop them. For these mod packs to work, again, you need Nexus Premium. That's due to some aspect of the Nexus API allowing you to automatically download certain things. So it would really be mostly on Nexus to give you that opt-out option, but thus far, it's not there. I think an opt-out would be a really easy solution to the mod pack backlash, make most people happy and okay with it. Sure, some mod authors that don't like it will opt out, but I imagine many will remain in and we still would have mod packs. Outside of that, there's also some concerns around monetization. We've seen with Ultimate Skyrim in the past, certain aspects or some of the newest updates being behind a paywall. Now, let's say you're a mod author and you can't monetize your mods. You're not allowed to, according to Bethesda. Then you have somebody create a mod pack and start monetizing that. I think it's natural to understand why that could hurt or why some people might be bothered as a result of it. I really do hope the whole mod pack situation does get sorted. I feel like Wabajack certainly has massive potential, especially on the user side. And again, I think it's as simple as an opt-out option to make almost everyone happy. But either way, yeah, that is a look at Wabajack, the tool right now for Fallout 4 and Skyrim that has the potential to really change things. Right now, it's again only for those games, but there's no reason it can't come to Fallout New Vegas or Fallout 3 in the future. The only thing required is somebody making a mod pack for it. And I think that's where this might really shine. Being able to play some of those older games, reinstall it, do a heavily modded playthrough, almost modernizing the game, all just from a few clicks on the user side. This one has some serious potential, and I think it'll be interesting to see where it goes in the future. If you guys enjoyed this video, you can leave a like or subscribe. I've actually been considering just doing kind of a few episodes of a live stream, trying out this mod pack, messing around with it in game. So let me know in the comments if that's something you'd like to see. Otherwise, as always, again, I thank you for watching and I hope to see you all next time. Later.